Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a bit of a knife catastrophe for me. It's not big, but, you know, I feel like you, sh you all should be warned a little bit about this one particular knife model. As you know, lately, I have been um, getting into Barlow's, the old slip twink Barlow's and stuff. Start off with the uh, Rough Rider Granddaddy Barlow here. Great knife, love it. Nothing wrong, this is not the subject of the video. Closer to the subject of the video is the slip joint. This is absolutely delightful. I've been carrying this in my pocket every day for a month now, and over a month now. This thing is wonderful. I love it. It's one of the best Kershaw slip joints I've ever had. Maybe as maybe in slip joints in general. It's just a fantastic knife altogether. But where the trouble really starts for me is when I bought the double detent version of the Kershaw Culpepper. And here it is. This bit me within a minute out of the box in a way that I didn't quite expect because I didn't look at it that close. And the issue is there's no blade tang. What I mean by that is when it's fully opened here, there's no dull spot down here like you have on this, which does help uh, save your fingers a little bit. That actually does come in handy on this knife here, and it's kept me from getting cut before. But this one, I did that a little bit, and I'm, I'm fine doing it now because I blunted this bottom part fairly well. But it bit right into my thumb, and just, it, it's healed up a bit now, but like it chewed straight down, clean cut, out. And also, I don't think it's even the same sort of copper. It should have uh, patinaed a little bit more by now, the way that this one has, and it's not. And I think it's a different alloy altogether, which is disappointing, for one. I love the idea of a double detent. I'm not saying that double detent is bad. I'm saying that for this particular knife here, not having the Choil, Ricasso, Tang, whatever you'd want to call this unground part of the blade, you know, not having that there has made this such a safety issue, especially with the double detent version. If this was a slip joint, I would feel better about it because that spring on this is really, really good. It takes a lot to push that to fail. Whereas here, that takes a lot less. You, you can just, like that just about, and pop it open, and uh, I want to love this knife, but I, I can't. It's, it's too much of a hazard to me to really be able to enjoy this knife. And then, like I said, the copper's not even the same right now. It, it's, Kershaw did so, so wonderful with this knife here. But they fell flat on their face with this one. This knife is garbage. I do not like it. You may. I'm not saying, you know, that you can't use it. But I'm just saying, like, for me, this knife failed on several levels that made the other, cur this cur coal pepper here, a delight to have. This is not a delight to have. I'm feeling negative with carrying this. And then, let's, let's get into the knife a little bit here. We have the double detent. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a strong detent, but it's not as strong as a slip joint. Um, we have Teflon washers in here, not brass or copper or bronze or whatever. Teflon. I do not like Teflon on knives. I know it's not the worst cut washer material, but I much prefer having metal washers. It just holds the blade so much better. The Teflon will wear more unevenly in my experience, and it just... It's a bugger. I just wish they had gone straight with brass or copper or whatever washer material that most other knife companies use. I love the shape of the blade. The overall Barlow inspiration here is great. I love it. That, that's fine. Uh, the steel liners is a given because of the double detent. And what's neat is that it's not just one side. It's both sides, both scales here underneath have liners that have the detent spring. So that's really cool how they worked that. It's not just one side giving you the detent. It's both sides. Really cool. 
Uh, the jimping is more aggressive on this one than it is on the original Culpepper for some reason. I don't know why. Where did the heck did that come from? I just fell out of nowhere over here. Where did that come from? Where, where, who, who sent you? <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Um, it's, it's, if you want to check it out, check it out. But I don't like it. And I would not have done that before without dulling that bottom part of the blade. And also, something else that gets me, and it's, it's probably because of the, the liners, but it's not as thin as the original model. It's actually a little bit thicker, and it just feels like a different knife in my hand. You know, it it's just not the same experience. And then, like, side by side with it closed here, blade to blade, you see that the back is way different there. That's because you don't have that little cutout for the slip joint to click in. That, that's a whole different aspect of it right there. But it, it, overall, I just do not like this knife. I'm going to keep it for reference and stuff, but man, I, I am I am truly disappointed here. This knife, I I didn't expect it to be the same or as good as a solid traditional slip joint I, you know double detents are hit or miss nowadays and with the weird knife laws you know people are doing what they can to get a knife that is legal in some places but this particular double detent knife i do not recommend this thing and mainly because of that choil there and the weak springs of the double detent it, it's those two issues combined, it's just not a safe knife to use at all. So, take that into account when you buy these knives. I highly recommend the, the Slip Joint Copper Culpepper from Kershaw. This thing is, a, is wonderful. This thing is hot trash. And just don't touch it with the 10-foot pole. And where can you buy these? You can buy these at smkw.com, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They're located in Seaverville, Tennessee, just the kind of attached to Gatlinburg in that area. And they sell a lot of good knives, but this is one knife that they sell that, personally, I feel like it's it's garbage. If you go to their website, I do have, I have posted a review of it on their website in the review section. You can read it there. This knife, I just, I just can't stand it. Um... Mainly for the safety concerns, but also the copper just seems different. It hasn't patinaed like the other one. I've had this for a little while now, doing what I've done to this one. And it's just not the same. And that's just throwing everything all out of whack. Because, like, the copper, that, that just doesn't match. I, I know that patinas grow over time, and maybe over more time it will patina better. But in the same amount of time that this one took to patina really well, the... This new Culpepper with double detent, it just has not. That's an aesthetic thing, I know, but... Yeah. Take take from this video what you will. I do not like the double detent Kershaw Culpepper Copper. The other Culpepper, I love it. I will carry it. I'll probably buy another one. But the double detent, don't touch it with a 10-foot pole unless you are willing to get your thumb chopped off. It is a finger guillotine. So, thank you for listening to me rant and ramble. Hope you got some information out of this video that will help you build your EDC to your standards. Until the next time, farewell, carry well, and a bye-bye.